If you're like me and you consume most of your photos from other photographers on social media like Instagram, then you've probably realized that photos just don't have as much heart as they used to. I guess it's not something new, but it has started to become a lot more dominant and obvious. I don't know if this has anything to do with how social media like Instagram prioritizes some photos over others, or if it's just that our decreasing attention spans can't engage with the photos well enough. It also doesn't help that the phone screen is just so tiny and you can't actually fully appreciate the photo that you're looking at and the rest of the real estate is taken over by ads or other posts that are trying to push some product or the other. With the advent of artificial intelligence, it has become that much easier to create beautiful images without having to actually go out at 4 a.m. in the morning and take photos where no one else is willing to do so. And because of this, the internet is going to be flooded with beautiful nature images but people are going to also start to become more tired of seeing these same photos everywhere on social media, especially where people's attention span is already paper thin. We need to distinguish our photos by adding heart and soul into them. I know this sounds a little bit abstract, but let me share with you the one skill that I think will actually help you get there. It all starts with using and developing a little bit of patience when you go out there and take photos. Landscape photography is different from other forms of photography like portrait, sport, or architecture photography because of the level of unpredictability that actually goes into it. It can be very difficult to determine the weather patterns, how nature is going to be affected by certain conditions, and how the photo is going to turn out. That patience becomes a very key feature in the whole experience. I think for me, I've realized that patience is the one skill that has actually helped me connect deeper with nature and ensure that I'm able to embody that heart and soul into my photos. This past year, I went to Acadia National Park and I wanted to photograph one of the most iconic locations there, the Bass Harbor Lighthouse. And so when I got there, maybe 30 minutes before sunset, I was primed to go and take the best photo I could and make my own version of the photos that I've seen on the internet. But what I didn't realize was that the place was going to be packed. There was absolutely no place to park and even if you could find a spot, when you go to the bedrocks in front of the lighthouse, it was just crawling with people. It was going to be hard enough to find a spot in that location to try and create a composition. And when I did try and move from one rock to the other, just to see if there was one empty spot where I could frame the lighthouse without anyone else and also get the light of the sunset, I realized that this was not the experience that I wanted to go away with. I might have been able to capture the photo that I wanted if I had searched around enough, but the whole experience would leave me very empty. And so I decided to forego the image entirely and go back regardless of how beautiful the sunset was going to be that day. I knew that if I took that photo, I would have no connection to it. I would not feel any sort of happiness from that experience. And I wouldn't be able to go home and say that I was proud of that photo. It would just end up being another photo of that lighthouse on the internet. So what I did was I came back to that same location the following day, but instead I came two hours earlier than sunset before anyone else had a chance to even go there or wanted to go there. And so what that allowed me to do is really take my time exploring the location. I took a lot more photos of the bedrocks, of the kelp, of the sun shining on those different features of the lighthouse. And so when the sunset finally came, even though the conditions weren't as I had expected, I had already formed a strong connection to that location. I knew the shot that I was going to go with and I didn't have to worry about people getting in my frame because I had been there long enough to have gotten to a spot where it would have been difficult if there were other people around, but when it was just me, I was able to find it. And at the crux of all of this was patience. Patience to be able to forego the first day, patience to then come back a lot earlier and spend time waiting for the sunset, at the same time enriching my experience of that location without any distractions of a lot of other people. And what this patience translates into is the ability to develop a deeper connection with that same nature that you were really awed by when you decided to take up landscape photography and also allows you enough time to look at the scene, look at the location, look at how the light is changing, look at how the wind is blowing, to see all these things in play and decide how the image will change as the conditions change in that location. So by the time you're primed for that best light, by the time you're primed for that best amount of fog, 
you're ready for the composition that you really wanted. The reason that landscape photographers are able to create the best photos that you see out there is because of patience. Patience in going back to the same location over and over again to develop a stronger connection with that location and understand what works and what doesn't work. I recently went on a trip to Shenandoah National Park, which is just littered with beautiful overlooks. I knew that once I got there, I would want to spend at least one morning during sunrise taking beautiful photos over one of these overlooks. But because I wasn't going to be able to spend a lot of time scouting that location, I knew that I would have to wake up a little bit earlier to give myself enough time to get accustomed to the overlook that I decide to end up going to. So the morning when I actually woke up and went to go out and take photos during sunrise, I woke up and got there by 5 a.m. But when I got there, I wasn't met with clear skies awaiting a beautiful sunrise, but just a blanket of fog. Don't get me wrong, I love fog. And if you've seen any of my photos, you've probably realized how much I love fog. But this was not the best time for fog. What I really wanted was that grand vista view but I was met with this blank gray wall right in front of me, blocking the entire view. The first thing that I tried to do is kind of scout the location, look at it, and see what was happening around me. I saw that the wind was blowing, that the fog was actually moving in and out through the valley, and the sun still hadn't risen above the mountain peak, so there was still going to be some time. I was hoping that by the time the sun rose behind the mountain, it would actually light up and heat up the valley and get rid of some of the fog. But then also taking a look at my weather app, I was able to see that the fog was moving, the clouds were actually moving. And so by the time that the sun was in the right position, the fog might be lifted by then enough for me to get the vista view that I wanted. And so what I did was I just spent the next half hour, one hour, 1.5, two hours, just waiting for that fog to lift. And in the meantime, walking back and forth, looking at the different scenes, looking at how the fog was moving and as the fog moved away from one place, what it was uncovering. I took that time to really get a better understanding of the nature, get a better understanding of the landscape in front of me. And it allowed me to do it at a very reasonable pace. And when the sun finally came out, it was spectacular. The light was perfect. It reflected off of the mist and created this really gorgeous glow. And then when it finally uncovered the vista, because the fog was still there lingering, it added a lot more depth to the photo and created something that I never would have imagined. And I ended up with photos that were much better than what I had envisioned when I first got there. I can't even begin to imagine the regret I might have felt if I had gone to a different location after seeing that wall of gray fog in front of me, or even worse, have gotten to that location late and not have been able to develop the rich experience that I did with that location and embody that into my photos. I would have wound up bouncing from one place to the other, just trying to get the most pretty picture and end up with photos that didn't really have any soul in them. So how do you actually end up cultivating patience and using it effectively to translate that into your experience for creating beautiful photos. Well, I think for landscape photography, it starts off at the very beginning of being able to determine and adjust to the different conditions out there in nature. From planning and looking at the different weather apps, and then when you go out in nature, being very in tune with what is happening with the clouds, what is happening with the wind, what is happening with the light as it moves across the landscape. And once you have that step down, the next step is pretty straightforward. It is observation. Observation of anything and everything. And what that means is then to give yourself enough time to actually be able to observe the little things. If you have a telescopic lens, use that to observe the most intimate details of the landscape and see and appreciate everything there. And so what that means is to give yourself enough time to go out there and really engross yourself in the nature, in the scene, in the location, especially if that is a new location. And so that you're not constantly being distracted by the meeting that you need to get back to for work, or that the sun is about to rise in five minutes and you're about to lose all the light that you were looking for and you just didn't get there early enough to develop that connection or find a composition. But in that time spent patiently waiting for the conditions to be just right, it's in that moment where you'll develop that deeper connection with the location, with the nature, and you'll be able to then impart that connection into your photos. You'll find more meaning in your photos that way. You'll also be able to talk about your photos and talk about photography in a much more meaningful way in that it will reflect how you actually feel rather than just another beautiful image of another iconic shot. And in that world of perfected images, 
your images captured in that state of being fully engrossed with nature will tend to stand out and allow people to find a glimpse of authenticity. Thank you.